Down in the dirt we will fall, cause death makes a meal of us all. Well, we're sitting here at this lovely Ramdas retreat. I'm sitting here with my partner, Duncan Trussell. Hello. And hi, Duncan. And luckily for us, Anne Lamont, Annie, welcome. Thank you. This must be um, it's a pretty good scene, though, right? This, we're, we have a retreat around no death, no fear. Uh, yet we are going snorkeling in the mm-hmm. ocean and turtle watching yes. and overeating, overeating while we're still lot. here on yeah. the mortal coil. Yeah. yeah. So, so l- let me ask you, uh, you came here, I don't even think, you had no idea about anything. You just wanted to come and hang, right? We Maybe wanted to Ram come Dass. be with you in Ram Dass. So I was at a, doing an event in um, Seattle and, and a woman who makes stuff for your, for the uh, jewelry to sell at the store came up to me and said, um, who she was, and she was involved somehow. I said, I was going to call Ragu this morning, or I was going to text, ha- which I really had, and she wrapped this bracelet around, so sort of like tying a string around your finger in, in big time. And I came home, and I wrote to you, and I said, hey, Ragu, can Neil, my partner, and I come see you in Ramdas? And you said, oh, why don't you just come be our guest at the retreat? So I said, okay. And we got okay. tickets the next day, and then a few hours later, we were here. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And then, because you had no idea about no death, no fear. No, we had no, no idea. Uh, and now, yeah. do you have, a, what's your feedback <laughs> and all of a sudden being in the midst of Roshi Joan Halifax, Frank Ostaseski, Ram Das, Krishna Das, and Bob Thurman, in terms of th- that particular teaching? Because I've been hearing, he's been talking to a lot of people, Duncan, and there's a lot of young people here, and he's he's been saying, you know, this is really scary stuff, especially if you're, you know, in the younger generation. You're not thinking about death, and you probably, maybe, you probably have not necessarily been next to somebody in your family or whatever. Maybe not even a pet that's passed. So uh, we we've been trying to address that a little bit. Uh, fortunately, uh, Mr. Trussell provides some levity to the occasion, and then Bob Thurman did as well. But what's your take on on the theme, and what are you getting? Well, I've actually had a lot of deaths in my life. If you've read my stuff, you know my dad died very tragically of brain cancer 40 years ago when I was young, and my best friend died and after I had my baby. And I've just um, been somebody that if, if someone in someone's family is going to die, they know I've been through it, so I've always been sort of summoned because I don't feel scared about it. Um, I mean, I feel scared that my son or my grandson will die or my dog, you know, panic stricken really. And, um, but mostly I don't, um, and Neil, my partner is a hospice volunteer. So we, we are, all, he's always coming home from people he's just visited. And we have a very dear friend who died while we were here actually. Oh. Yeah. Uh, two days ago. And we've been with her a lot and he's done a, me- a memoir with her. And so we've been immersed in her illness and being there and visiting and, um, so um, I thought it was funny, yeah, because there are so many young people, and everywhere they went, it was like death, 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 rot, work. Because when you're a kid, too, when you're young, there's a lot more worms involved in the discussion of death, right? And there's songs <laughs> yeah. that go with it. The worms crawling. Yeah, yeah, worms yeah crawling, right, right, sure. right. Yeah, and but you know, if when I was young, well, I was when I was young, my dad was got so sick when I was twenty three, and this is um in the mi- mid late seventies, and you literally didn't mention death. It was a bad manners, and it really wasn't until the AIDS epidemic that you could talk about death and that death that someone's time was really short. You were supposed to not notice, you know, that they weighed seventy pounds and they ha- wow. and they needed oxygen, and you were supposed to like because we were polite. We were children of the fifties. So, um, but when my dad got sick, Neil's heard this a thousand times, but we had a really dear friend who also had cancer at the time, Susan Dunn, and they would, you just didn't say the word. It was like a buzzkill, right? So they would sit outside the coffee 
house in Bellinas and dad would say, well, Susan, how's your cancer today? Really loudly, you know. And nice. then, then my dad would say, well, my cancer is, Susan would say, well, my cancer is okay, I think. Ken, how is yours? And he'd say, well, I think I'm a little weaker. And so I got, I wrote, my first novel was called Hard Laughter. And it was about laughing about this very hard stuff, you know. It's easy to laugh when, when it's delightful or neurotic or, or really universal and kind of kicky, but, but when you can laugh about this thing, like and when when my dad died, it was like a nuclear bomb was falling on my family because he was the center of our life. You know, we just I have older and younger brothers, and um, and so I I kind of got. Um, stuck with it early on, but there wasn't this consciousness, you know, there wasn't this spiritual um, nomenclature that we're talking about soul as opposed to the broken down old car that's finally run its t- course. And, and, um, and mm-hmm. so, but then I got involved with reading Ram Dass's books early on, and that took away a ton of fear. You're very, how old are you? Do you mind my asking? 44. Are you really? God, you are so great looking. You have beautiful skin. <laughs> it's a blessing. You. There's no reason to feel embarrassed. It's a blessing. <laughs> I think probably God just loves you more than other people. Oh, that's you, how the, yeah. That's, what the, that's, that's how it works. How that's the Christian it. path. Because yeah. there is a hierarchical yeah. love There is. With God, there definitely right? is. That's a, yeah. But you may get a really, a much nicer seat in heaven because of it too, like near the dessert table or the cheeses. <laughs> You're not fooling me, Anne Lamar. No, it's, it's true. Cheese. Yes. The cheese, the cheese in the baguettes. God but, loves uh, Dick Cheney. Exactly the same the, as he the, loves me. I've yes. written that. I have I, written that I, I would wash Dick Cheney's feet, and I'm I believe he you. would wash mine, yeah. Yes. But um, anyway, so I, th- I think it's scary. It's kind of tough stuff, but if I were young, oh, my God, if I had had this information mm. at you know 30 and 40, my whole life would have been... Sp- quantifiably better easier much more free much more everything because everything in us via the culture and our parents is to be terrified and shut down and not not be with it because it first of all it's bad manners and second of all it's just so defeating that you have this beautiful life and you've kind of conned some people into loving you and you roped them in you know and and they're gonna die i have a grandchild who looks like god you know and 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 he may die I'm not positive, but he may die someday. And um, but to have known this and to have been able to dance with it, you know, instead of to hide from it, would have changed my life literally more than any other information I could have gotten. Everybody, listen out there. I got it. You know, everybody that's listening right now. This is exactly. I mean, this is what I I said to you the other day when we talked about this. That it's first of all, everything you just said is so apropos. I wish I would have started earlier. I would have had been able to be a lot more friendly towards the fear and walk towards it rather than run from it. But the other thing is, in this whole thing, we're, we're talking about, and I read this thing of Milarepa, where I went, I, I went to conquer my fear of death, and I sat, he sat in a cave forever, and I found the deathless state, or that Never, which... When you said that, you know what I thought? What? How about Milarepa? You get strapped into a, a radiation, <laughs> one of those radiation machines. I had testicular cancer. <laughs> I know. Hey, Milarepa, you get strapped into a radiation machine when they're playing Tina Turner. <laughs> when they decide to play Tina Turner and they're blasting your lymph nodes. Then let's talk about death. Oh, you went to a nice cave, beautiful <laughs> with a great view, and you're a monk, and you're not attached to anyone, and you're wandering free and clear. What about the fact that, like, you've got you get you know what I'm talking about? What about that Milarepa, where you've got to make the phone call to your family and be like, oh yeah, one of my balls has death inside of it. <laughs> then do a nice koan. Milarepa. That being said, I'm I'm so grateful for these teachings because it certainly helped. I don't mean to sound cynical or jaded. We're, just we're, like, what I'm talking about is uh, also it creates a an environment where we can start to relate with that thing in, in us, whatever we want to call it, soul, Buddha mind, whatever, nirvana, that is not subject to this fear. It's like Ramdas's talk about yes. you've got to operate on more than one plane at a time in this life so that's very important and by the way Milarepa could have been in the re- in the MRI the radiation machine whatever guarantee and he wouldn't he didn't drink Diet Coke he didn't leave his laptop yeah, on true. his balls for five years straight <laughs> and may I ask you a question you're saying you wish that you had this when you were younger 
so many artists that I've talked to, particularly comedians, when they're confronted with this stuff, they say, I, this would, I'm afraid this is going to destroy my ability to be funny. Do you think if you encountered this earlier on, would it have affected your writing in some way? Do you, do you ever, does that thought ever come into your mind that, that, that these kinds of positive transformations or I know much of what you write about is faith and it's beautiful and do, do, but looking at the, the stream of your evolution as an artist when do you worry that, do you ever think like well wait maybe if I encountered this early on it I wouldn't have been such a great writer well yeah um I just want to say something before I answer your question which is I totally love that you're resistant and that it's um you're you know it's it's not like you're, it's, there's nothing on a bumper sticker that's going to um, throw the lights on for you and you're going to go, oh, well, that was then and now I'm Zorba the Greek and, you know, hit me with your best shot. Life, it's not appropriate. It's appropriate. It's very human just to be afraid of that, that um, what we love, love, love most it, vis- it won't be we can't reach the, each other by phone after a point you know yes. and that's what I hate and I loved last night I forgot who was talking maybe it was Mr. Thurman when he's or I don't know who it was but they said I don't want all that love I want him back you know I yes. felt and I you know it's all truth is a paradox and when Pammy died I felt a lot of incredible spiritual support sort of I was felt like I was in a basket of spiritual support and I was enraged and it took me over 10 years to stop being grief struck and mad and I hate that the culture tells you that you will get over it and that you should have a kind of a a a more you know um more evolved sort of um take on it all it's just a crock of shit and that it does the stuff that enlivens us and heals us doesn't come on bumper stickers you know it's it's hard fought and we but the, a conference like this means that we're available for it you know we show right. up and before I turned on Woody Allen he said 80 percent of life is just showing up and we show up for it and some of it gets in and some of it doesn't get in and some of it you think that's ridiculous or not for me thank you though <laughs> right thanks so much but I don't I think not Right. But um, anyway, it's it, it, it's like people are always saying, let go and let God. And I just want to stab him in the head with a <laughs> fork like a baked yeah. potato. Like if I could let go of this right now, believe me, I would. I don't love right. being in this clenched, rashy state. But if somebody says something, God never gives us more than we can. It's like, well, God didn't say that for one thing. And that's just so patronizing and it's just so um arrogant but thanks for sharing but we're not friends anymore wow. because now whenever i see you i will run but thank you um and so anyway um it, it for me it was very very evolutionary you know i had all the ram Dass books in my head and it took it's like the e. e cummings poem plato told them lao told them even general yes man sherman told him it took a nip and eyes bit of the old 12th street l to tell him about death. Everyone can tell you about death. It takes death to, to, to help you let go, you know, and go, okay, fine. <laughs> this is my usual, my beautiful moment of surrender with God, as I say, with enormous bitterness. Okay, fine. Oh, and that's, that's, yeah, that's sort of how I ha- could come to the point with death going, okay, fine. But anyway, um, I love that. That's so beautiful. <laughs> that's so pure and Good real. Mantra. <laughs> yeah, that's a mantra. Good mantra. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> you know, I wrote a book, the three. Uh, I forgot. Help. Thanks. While the three essential prayers, and I thought a great fourth prayer would be whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. And your, what's your acronym for God? There's so many. One is um, good orderly direction. That's kind of for our Hindu and Buddhist friends, but we don't buy that for a second. Um, The one with despair. I don't know. There's a good um, gift of desperation. That's it. That's a great one. Well, that's a very uh, recovery-based one, and that's a very dark night of the soul one. That, um, you know, you don't do the work if things are going really well and no one's mad at you and, and, um, and you're doing fine financially and you've kept your weight down, then there's no reason to do the deep dive into the truth of our spiritual identity, which is, 
you know, eternal and, you know, dual citizenship of eternal and immortal and here <laughs> with our sore feet, you know, and yes. our testicular cancer and the whole holy enchilada. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what Houston Smith called it. But um, back to your question from 10 minutes ago, which was a good one. Did I, do I think that having made friends with death earlier than I did, would it, would it have changed my writing? Or that kind of sense of urgency that I think probably artists are talking about when they say um, that this or that might have um, kind of either calmed them so much that they didn't get that very, very edgy writing going yes. that made, made people respond. I always felt, um, I got sober 32 years ago, but and by the time I was... Sober, I had four, I think four books out already, and I had a career, I had this whole thing, I I uh, was, I still live in the county where I was born and raised, I'm 64, you know, everyone I love and need, my aunts and uncle, my mom and dad and cousins, and everybody was there, so I was loved out of all sense of proportion, and I felt terror that if I stopped drinking, I would never write again, because I needed the misery, because I needed that edge, and right. I need, you know, and I... And I needed the shame, and I needed the raging sick ego. And I felt that without those, and then with, you know, 10 or 11 cool, refreshing beers at night to relax with, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be cra sufficiently crazy enough to even be funny anymore. But that's one of the lies of the disease, you know, or of the ego, that if you are well and if you're happy, the jig's up. Because, you know, you agreed when you were a little kid not to be too big or too juicy because it makes everybody else look right. like they're not doing that well. And, um, you know, if you're doing too well, I don't, you know, the whole psychological well, I, I think thing. this in Christianity, this is the one one of the th really cool things about Christianity is that you get to use the word Satan. And I can't think of anything truly more satanic really? than that thought, a force in the universe telling you that should you become happy and healthy, then the thing you love doing the most will suck. Right. That's straight out right. of a imp's mouth if you well the it. disease of addiction and co black belt codependence and gambling and sex and love addiction, all of it. Um, is uh it feel and i don't use the word satan i can tell you very often but uh i would say it's satanic and i would say the drug cartels you know it's very like i don't think trump is satanic i feel like um that the raging narcissism inside of him is is disease he you know he came from a family of disease he had a violent father his brother died of the father you know his brother died uh, suicide by alcoholism and donald trump is still alive but it's like a a form of de a very agitated caffeinated death you know that he brings to the common well right but i wouldn't say it is satanic i would say the the disease of the self the raging hateful ego and addiction to power is satanic and i've been with neil a year and a half and he's never i don't think heard me say the word satan before because then you always think church lady you're like well isn't that special yeah but um <laughs> But yeah, no, the, and then the funny thing is that when you get, when, at, when you heal the shame and when you heal the raging, broken, wounded ego, I mean, it's a ping pong game, right? I know you're just like me in probably all important ways that it's a constant ping pong game between the narcissism and the self doubt and the self loathing. And the jig is about to be up probably Wednesday right after lunch, right? I don't get to be a writer anymore. Right. I have to be, I have to be an accountant or something it's gonna be really a stretch for me because i'm a dropout but so it's constantly that that i'm going to be this this huge open this thing or and and when as it heals and you sort of settle down into the silt you i, I actually it turned out it's like it, my windows got washed you know and and it was like the huxley thing doors of perception but not approached from a psychedelic point of view but from a you know cleaner windows and clean you know easier healthier breath and clean breath and cleaner lungs and 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 also the weird thing that you agreed not to do as a child and you signed the contract it for to not pay attention right cuz you if you're paying attention in an alcoholic home you're seeing stuff that they can't bear for you to see or to even know. And so if you grow up with sick parents, uh, with mentally ill parents, the first thing you agree is not to see what's going on. 
and if and I have a mother who's who's passed, but who's English, and so the English tradition and the alcohol tradition. My father was that we're raging atheists. The whole thing is their life depended on us agreeing not to see what was going on, and so it's very very hard to trust the narration of your own life, whether you're writing novels or memoirs or just being a truth teller in the world, just being a instrument of the truth as it comes through you it's very hard and that's where writers have to begin because you've been told that what you see is not actually going on and because my mother was english by extension what you felt was not actually what you felt and they would explain to you that you weren't feeling the two well women in the 50s you did not do anger you did not do anger you did not do grief because grief made people crazy and there was no death so if you were crying because an animal had died or my grandfather it was like the big eraser came and got him when i was six and we didn't talk about it and so if you were having feelings you went to your room and you didn't eat and all the women I know, have eat, including me, have had massive eating disorders and body. Because if you had feelings you were wrong, if you thought that this was going on, you were wrong, and you were wrecking everything for everyone, no wow. matter, no, 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 no wonder mom and dad had an unhappy marriage with you spewing all these crazy hallucinations about their drinking or, or their mental illness, right? And so when I got sober, I hated it. I mean, I have always said that this place has not been a good match for me because I was in the 50s there was this book called The Overly Sensitive Child and I was very very sensitive I had migraines I had a sickness that wrecked the family further and um and I was sensitive, and there wasn't the consciousness. It was post-war. The consciousness was that you bottle it up, and it's Eisenhower, and you mow the lawn, and it's Mad Men and all that. And there wasn't this consciousness that to have a big open heart and big goggly eyes um, that are seeing everything and taking it in was a beautiful thing. To grieve for a, a loss, a friend's lost dog was a beautiful thing. And it, it wasn't. It, it wrecked everything. You know, wow. it's like, oh, the battle cry at our house was oh for christ's sake annie now what i'm sad about india there are pictures of children on the cover of the national geographic and there's bugs on their eyes and i'm that's and i'm we're at the pound and we're going to get a cat but there's 30 cats and this is very upsetting for me i know we can't take them all home and i would have to go outside and because i felt the whole suffering of the world and it was like no it's just ridiculous there's there's nothing you can do they said Mm. do you buy the stuff thurman was saying about we choose our parents and 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 do you play around with the concept that for whatever reason you dropped into this dimension choosing parents that were going to squelch your uh i don't okay wait wait. you gotta just frame this a little bit more than this concept oh you you're up there and you oh yeah they'd be good this is the complexity of karma and what actually uh happens is beyond rational mind right he was simplifying this in that moment to give people an idea that this that you came in and you described this intense intense family life with you know illness and so on and the kind of n- neuroses that that piled up like in a big p- I could give you maybe not as big a pile but a pretty big pile that would compare to your pile he probably could as well and uh there is something to the fact that this is what we did need to for you to be able to share the way that you share with people would not have been possible without that pile of neuroses probably I, I mean, I'm sure of it because I read your books and I see myself and so much of it, as many people do, which is why, you know, they buy the books. It, we should talk about that. The, the, uh, and and thir- one thing Thurman did say, Bob did say, he talked about how we indulge our neuroses as well. I mean, and that's something that we never talk about, you know, in and, and terms of like, and, and you mentioned a little bit in terms of um, a grief, and how it's been many, many years that you've grieved over this person, right? And he talked about, okay, we gotta, we got to realize that we're indulging our neuroses at some level. We've got to say, okay. I mean, he was very 
glib about it in that moment yesterday, but I remembered it because I was thinking of my friend, Ramesh. I don't know if you remember yeah, Ramesh I and Kay. I had breakfast You had breakfast with them, yeah. So, you know, they lost their 14-year-old to yeah. a, uh, in a bike accident. And I was thinking about her, who's had a tough time for these last four or five years. So, yeah, what do you think about how our neuroses, how we kind of pile on whatever it is that we are dealing with and we pile on? Is there, do you feel there's an indulgence on our Well, I just also want to say that um, a few times I've heard you express um, things or doubt or um, do you really think or whatever, and you always seem to get shamed for it. (laughs) And I think it's a little bit shaming to cut him off as if he didn't quite understand. I mean, he was, everyone's using shorthand. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I think it's a little shaming. But um, because no one knows, and Bob Thurman is not the boss of me. (laughs) And, um, and, and And I saw a girl at the last Women's March and she had a t-shirt on it said, I fought, I obey no authority but my mom. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> and, um, and what I think is I don't have a clue, you know, and that there are times where, um, like when my friend Pammy died with a little baby, which if I were God's West Coast representative, this would not have happened. This was a mix-up. It was supposed yeah, to be Donald Rumsfeld. And yeah, it was like paperwork foul up. And I, and I can't get okay with it at this, but all truth is paradox, and I accept it, you know. And um, and there, uh, when she was dying, I had I was. Do you know Dale Borglum? You, of course. Sorry, you know Dale Borglum. He's he was her, friend, yes. he was her living dying coach. Yeah, so that's how oh, I knew. Yeah, no, yeah. I, now I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was kind of coaching me, too, because, you know, it was the end of the world for me, too. We've been best friends since high school. And um, she'd helped me raise my child for a couple of years. And um, and so he was of your ilk, Ragu, <laughs> of yeah, your ilky was, ilk. Yes, he was ilking with us back He was in the ilking day with, with you Ramdas back India, with yeah. Maharaji. And um, and so he had a reincarnation feeling, and you know, and he didn't ever try to correct my thinking. I feel like people keep trying to correct your thinking, and I saw it on stage a couple times. And I mentioned it to Neil, and I said I thought that was kind of shaming. But anyway, um, it is part of our shit. Yeah. May I, okay. may, may I respond to that quickly, just because I know that it can seem like that, and, uh-huh. I, and I know some people interpret it as that. Okay. But um, that is the shtick. Okay. You're mostly seeing. I, I do not feel shame by them. Okay. And, and, and I, the I. It's good to hear that though, because I don't want people to feel uncomfortable as though I'm up yeah. there thinking, "Oh my God, these people are shaming me." Right. Because the truth is, they've really helped me and, and embraced me you. so yeah. much and yeah, embraced yeah. me and helped me open up. And honestly, like whatever they do to smack me down, it doesn't right. even matter. Cause well, I'm, that's what Neil said. Neil said that's not what's going on. That's kind of like my projection of being a little kid where I was feeling corrected all the time, or mm-hmm. that. But also, by the same token, they're all really old and they're going to yeah. die soon. And you're still young, yeah. so Thank like, you who so much. cares? <laughs> like, bore me later, Ragu. Well, I uh, ask you that because um, right. when you're these, what you're doing, it, it, I think to myself, what he's saying too. I, I look at these things as lenses to look at things through. Right. True or false? Who knows? Right. But I think, have you ever heard the idea that, that Terence McKenna says a shaman is a sick person who's healed themselves? Have you ever heard that before? No. And how all, uh, just, just this brief chance to chat with you, it's, I, it's like, oh my God, I feel liberated. And, and, and it's because you, you did it. You, oh, you did it. Thanks. And because you did it, you've done it for so many of us. You oh. suffered for us. I mean, that is Christianity, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Do you have a particular path you're on? Oh, I chant Hare Krishna and Ram. Uh-huh. And, oh, you and, do? But I love Jesus. And You're a chanty guy. I love chanting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Jesus, too. I mean, how can you not love Jesus? It's like not loving E.T. or something, right? <laughs> right? But I want to say two quick things about the question, too. Is when the, So anyway, I, when I was with Dale, and he was, really, he was kind of like birth coaching me through this death. and um, He's great. He way, is amazing. Living, dying Borglum. project. Yeah. yeah. 
Living Dying Project in Fairfax. But so I would, I would kind of, as I said, dance with the reincarnation a little bit and wonder and find solace in the fact that maybe Pammy had known and before she got here, before she got assigned her biography or whatever, that she was going to only live to 37, she'd have a baby, she'd have us, and that she signed on for it because it was exactly what she needed to get free and to get into union with God. And it brought me a lot of solace. And I didn't just plug into it like a software or something. You know, it feels absolutely true but it's not my path and then and so I would kind of, you know it's it's part of me it's like a weave I'm I'm like a fruitcake you know I mean so I hate fruitcake but I'm <laughs> I'm I'm like me too. yeah ugh, it's not even an edible but anyway um <laughs> then there was this there's two things one thing I wanted to share with you because I think you would love it is that this guy that was not an alcoholic a priest who helped AA get off the ground said sometimes I think that heaven is just a new pair of glasses you know and so you were talking wow. about lenses you know you see the le- you see through this you see through Bob Thurman's lens and it's all true and then I kind of resist and I can't stand when people think that they have the truth and and I thought it was the truth I, I don't disagree with anything Bob said yeah. and yet I kind of bristle if somebody thinks and Neil does it all the time and um and I always have to smack him down but <laughs> <laughs> Neil is here by the way Neil's everybody. here <laughs> and I am so in love with him but he'll think that what he how he was healed is the way the best the only healing path but the other thing I wanted to say was that um years after Dale and I worked together Um, I read that book by Carolyn Mace. Have you ever read it called Sacred Contracts? It's going to blow your mind, and you are going to owe me forever. All right. Yeah, 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 which is why I'm doing this, why I'm doing this. Yeah, I'm in. And I'll call in that chit at some (laughs) point. But (laughs) you read that book, right? It's uh, Sacred Contracts. But I know of it, and I wipes into it. Yeah. My mom loved her. Yeah, she's she's fabulous. I love that she's so brilliant, and she's so cranky. You know, that just adds such a realm of of authenticity to it. She's lovely. She's hilarious funny she's judgmental she's bossy she's cranky and she's sharing the truth and it's just like with bob thurman that's not i don't i mean i i grok it but i don't always um weave it into my clothing but but this book blew my mind because it was that before you came around came here with uh you know got to sign the body and the and the biography that you like there's somebody i just can't stand i just a couple people i'm i want to write a book called um all the people i still hate a christian perspective oh. wouldn't that be great <laughs> wouldn't that be great but with these people that really have hurt us or um, or continue to hurt us or continue to just make us nuts because of their behavior, which is awful, 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 objectively, <laughs> um, you can start to see that you made some kind of contract with them before you got here. And you say to the, wo- say the woman in this case, this hypothetical case, um, I am going to need you to mess with my family at a level I'm not even sure you're willing or able to do. And it's going to be a massive financial attack on us. It's going to be legal and it's going to be public. You're going to go big. It's going to involve media. And, and then she would say, oh, no, I could do that. I think that would be fun. Are you sure? You go, yeah, yeah, let's do that. And she said, well, what I need for you to do, you're going to win. <laughs> And that's going to make me crazy, and I'm going to have to take some of this underground, and it's going to cause some stuff that I don't know if you're prepared for. I go, no, I'm in. I'm in. And I have had an experience of of two people that have hurt me and my family at the deepest, deepest possible level. And once while meditating, while thinking about this sacred contract, and sitting on the floor with my back up and my knees drawn to me, I felt her literally beside me in labor. And it didn't, it felt absolutely as real as you right here with your skin, you know, and I felt her and I started to laugh out loud because I got it that it and, and that she and I could feel her laughing too. Wow. Right. And you know, I don't need to ever see her again. This isn't about wanting to have lunch with someone. This is about this deeper mm. kind of cosmic quantum healing and release into the, into the good you know, instead of that cramped, clenched, rashy, you know, 
ugliness that makes us part of what is so excruciating in, in the current government. Wow. So um, that's a book I think you would love. And you don't have to take it all. There's nothing that you sign at the end, you know. But it, And it's like what we were talking about with reincarnation, that it kind of comes through exactly when you need it. And you get it, and it's true. And it bathes you in itself, in the truth of itself, and you can breathe again. And then you're home, right? As soon as you can breathe again, that's home. Did you ever, did I ever tell you, because uh, we just... I don't think we've ever really talked about Christ when we've had chats. Did I ever tell you that when we went to see Maharaji Neem Karoli Baba, literally in the first few times, all he talked about was Christ? Did you know that? No. You, I've known that from the from, other from guys. Dale. Yeah, and, I, and you said something about it yesterday on, with a mic in your hand, I think. Yeah, or Krishnadas yeah, tells Krishna the Dost story right. of the Canadian guy, meaning me, who yeah. went because yeah. I, I met my guru, so you figure Hindu guru, get a mantra, you're fine. And I said, well, so how do I meditate? Because I was thinking mantra, meditate. I didn't even know what what I was talking about. He said, meditate like Christ. When he was nailed to the cross, he felt love, not pain. He was lost in love with everything. And then the next day we went back and Ram Dass, I got Ram Dass to say, well, how did he meditate? You know, which is this famous story. And he just went back, closed his eyes, and tears came. And uh, right then, we experienced Christ in that moment. And we were all Jewish who had no relationship. I had never read the New Testament. And then after, he used to say, did you read his book? Huh? Who? His book. Isha, which is Jesus yeah. in Hindi. So there is a tremendous... Uh, teaching that we got around Christ in India before anything. It was Christ and Hanuman, they're the same. Mm -hmm. Service to mm -hmm. man and so on. Yeah. Anyhow, I, I never told you this, so I, yeah. I just because it made me think about it. It's yeah, really thank you, yeah. Elemental to us. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that Bob, our friend Bob, mm -hmm. said yesterday, which really struck me, was about what this fabric is that we are connected to by love, which is a tough word because it's so, you know, it means romantic love to us here in the West for the most part. Um, and he said, and I guess that the Tibetans, how they, uh, how they approach it is love means how, m how happy you can make another right. person. Right, yeah. Was that great i mean mm -hmm. i really love that and and that's mm -hmm. i get that feeling in your writing and uh in your books so. oh thank you well i really love that thing rumi said that through love all pain will turn to medicine you mm -hmm. know and that has really guided me as a storyteller because the medicine of the people that i have been given life by really um has sprung from pain and all great comedians you know it's sprung from pain uh, you know there's a new book on robin williams coming out next week and it springs from this intense isolation sure. all of it that huge world that was robin williams springs from an attic with 300 toy soldiers you know and giving them different personalities and voices and situations and but um through love all pain will turn to medicine. And so that, we, you know, that, that, and Jesus says, everything I can do, you can do, you know. And he goes up to the blind man, he puts dirt in his hand and spits in it and makes mud and puts it on the guy's eye. And he doesn't say, what do you plan to look at now that I've given you your sight back, right? He just heals because he, he knows, wow. he's got, it's like Neil would call it a parlor trick. He can heal. Yeah. And so we can heal too. But the way that you people like us would heal is just by telling the truth and being kind of playful with it sometimes but not you know not um at the cost of trying to make it cuter and more right. digestible than it is but because we're funny just because that's a gift right. and um and a defense and all that but it's Big also time. just such a gift such a blessing to have a sense of humor and and, a, and one that is transmittable but um i was thinking also what some one of you guys said um, there's a story of a little child, a little girl who's scared to death to go to sleep in the dark and, and she keeps calling out for her mom and um, her mom will come in and say, Jesus is right here with you, don't be afraid, you know, and, 
And um, and then the mother goes out to her bedroom, and after all, the child calls for her again, and the mom comes in and says, Jesus, right here on the bed with you. There's no reason to be afraid. You can't be anywhere where Jesus is. This goes on and on. Finally, the last time the mother comes in, she sits down with the child and says, Jesus, right here with you. And the child says, I need someone with skin on. Ah, right. yes. Right. And that's what we need here sometimes. Most people aren't going to get to India, to the Hanuman Temple. and yeah. But that someone with skin on, um, it, it's there's no difference, right? Because there's no difference between me and anyone. And that if I just sit with you, I mean, that was a miracle that at some point we learned to listen. I mean, that was not a huge part of the toolkit that Mm -hmm. our parents shared with us. You know, the thing was about being conversational, being brilliant, being erudite. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, And now this whole thing from the 60s and the 70s of listening as the great medicine of saying, yeah, I got a minute. What's going on? Yeah. And then not, as my parents said, not correcting what the person thinks is going on and saying, well, no, I, you know, here's another way. Here's a better way to look at it. Just listening and nodding, going, yeah, you know, me too. Yeah, I know yeah. exactly. You know, so, that is that is the technique in psychedelic harm reduction in the trainings that they do for festivals is, is just what you said, is when someone is having a really bad trip the last thing you want to do is correct or, or judge or anything with their experience. If you just listen compassionately, they'll calm down. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I wanted to ask you, he, he, this Neem, what Neem Crowley Baba said about Jesus, he's, will you say that again? Well, when finally he said, you don't, he, tears came down and he said, you don't understand. He kept repeating, you don't understand. But, he is one with every but sentient being he was lost in cross, love the thing on the cross he felt no pain only love what do you think about that because i hear that sometimes and 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 my version of jesus is this broken terrified you th- he had a very human death and it is the grimmest shittiest death they could come yes. up with at the time and he's killed next to criminals too right it's the most ignominious and excruciating death but he and god are he's in labor you know and god never leaves him for a second and he you know there's a song we sing only love held him there on the cross Whoa. he could and it says we we he could have called ten thousand angels to come to his rescue only love held him there at the cross and he just was going through labor like you have not gone through labor and yet yes. <laughs> it's a big yet <laughs> for you <laughs> a long time and, down the road and um but about halfway through you realize you don't like children you know <laughs> and that <laughs> but then but you're not alone and you're and you're with people who are helping you not um believe that your thinking is where the buck ends you know and they're and they're giving you ice chips and extremely cold apple juice it's communion and people are my younger brother was there and my best friend pammy was there and nurses and doctors and 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 so when you forget you don't that you don't like children they they take your mind off that that you're just in a process it's contraction and release and breath and peace and oh no 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 oh no here it's back it's back it's okay remember the last one you contract you constrict it hurts really like a mother (laughs) and uh and uh, i think that's where that comes from and then and you constrict and then you release and you breathe, and you relax, and you rest, and it's what heaven will be like. A new pair of glasses, and they give you ice chips and some very cold apple juice. <laughs> yeah, and then you know what comes out? New life. Mm. And that's what Jesus was saying. He was saying, I'm going to do this. Only love is holding me here, and I love you so much that I'm, I've stretched my arms out as far as they will go. And they nailed them to the wood. But, if you, you know, the tradition is that if you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have died that humiliating and excruciating death, excruciating death because he was in labor. And he had this labor coach, you know, Mother God. Hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wonderful, Annie. Okay, we're at we're we're pretty close here, but I want to give you do you have one more something that you want to get uh some words of wisdom from Annie? How do you follow that? Well, I'll tell you another story that you will really like. Okay. Okay. (laughs) You know, the great Barry Lopez said, um, sometimes we need stories more than we need food. Mm -hmm. But I heard a story on the radio. So this is not from like some brilliant Hindu um, 
holy woman or man, but um, it was a story of uh, the man who was speaking um, had a brother who was five um, when he when the speaker whoever it was was born and 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 the five year old brother just it was like the end of the world as it was for my older brother when I was born because he was like the prince you know he had it all in place he was the first of the grandchildren it's all perfect and then me his first words yeah. to mom and dad were take it back <laughs> and um, <laughs> and anyway so this little boy the five year old's waiting for the mother to get ready to go to the hospital. And he's just so scared and sad. His parents are in the bedroom next door. And uh, and they're a religious family. And he calls out to the dad, Daddy, are you there? And the father says, I'm right here. I'm always right here. It's like Jesus calls God, Abba, Father, for Daddy. Yeah. He calls him Daddy. It's very, very intimate. And he says, Daddy, are you there? You know, I'm right here. I'm always here. I'm always here. And there's a long pause. And then the little boy says, is your face turned toward me? Mm. Wow, and that's my Jesus experience. Wow, you know, somebody said, uh, some writer said, the greatest, absolutely, the greatest gift you can give anyone is your full, absolute attention. That's right. And so hard for most of us to give partial attention, and especially in these times. And and I've said this a billion times. We had a whole retreat around trust last time we were here. And I told P- and I think I was with Duncan and Ramdas and I said when I first met Ramdas, I opened the, the I knocked on the door to an apartment in Montreal where I was and he opened the door and he gave me the most attention I had ever been given in my uh, maybe when I was a baby my mother might have given me but to the, after you know that was easily forgotten and I was like astounded that somebody who didn't know me would do such a thing, you know. To this day, that has, and you know, that led me to trust him enormously, uh, 100%, and go to India right away, followed him to India right after that. But to this day, uh, and I, you know, as the director of Love Serve, remember, I, I'm fielding all the stuff that would come to Ramdas because at this point, you know, he's just not going, you know, he cannot do that. He doesn't have the bandwidth for it. And every time I I have him in mind to give, I mean, and I can't, and I, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting better. I tell him this all the time. I'm You're in my mind all the time as a model to give attention to people and not dismiss it no matter what, which you, as you see, he does not ever, it, right today, and that's today. He wants to go give that attention to every person. And, you know, of course, it's a problem because he doesn't have the energy. And so, But he doesn't care about himself. And it's that, you know, letting go of caring so much about ourselves, which is really the key to this. Thank you, Annie. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, so you Duncan. You're to welcome. This is like, Thank you. Are you kidding? I can't believe I have to be here. Yeah. Good favorite people. I'm lucky. Thank you. So lucky. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so glad to know you now. Oh, Can you believe point. it? What a <laughs> scam, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like with the God thing, what's the catch? And it's like, that's the catch. There's no catch. Yeah, uh, right. Just is. Love is. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. For my sunshine, for my sunshine, do you hear them singing, singing from the graveyard? Were the midwives the garden? Turn your mothers 